All right, a while back, uh, when a crafter and crew first showed up on the forum, I noticed they had a knife being passed around, a real, real nice bushcraft knife, uh, with a link to um, Max Pax's uh, webpage. I got to looking around on his on Max's webpage, and I fell in love with uh, his buoys. Me and my wife both. Now, you may have noticed from the last trip, that hero shot I had where we had like, I don't know, more than a thousand dollars to steal lineup on the log. Two of the knives there were a couple of uh, Max's buoys. So I'm going to talk about a couple of knives that I got from him. My wife at a later time can choose to talk about her knife that I got her. Um... Now, I'll tell you, it didn't take me that long to get this knife, all told. No, uh, when compared to some of these other Smiths online, on the floor. Uh, I think uh, from a custom order, I waited about two months to get this. Uh, showed up straight from Italy. Um, I could have had the knife, could have had one of these sooner because he had one that uh, had a rat tail style made. But I had uh, requested a, a full tang version, which he provided. So let's start. I'm going to talk about this knife from the sheath first, and then I'll uh, pull it out and show you the blade. All right. Now the sheath itself is uh, very pretty, as you can see. Stacked leather sheath. Uh, got a nice belt. Got a nice uh, retention strap for the knife. Uh, it's a lot. Of, one feature you don't see on a lot of bushcraft knives nowadays. It's got a hole for a leg lanyard, which I've made out of a piece of paracord and a cord lock. Um, I had him put a fire steel loop on here with a ferrocerium rod, the biggest one he could get. Uh, which This one's about 3 8 I just did a video about the fire steel practice. You all saw me use it. As a retention strap for that. Off the fire steel lanyard. Fire steel itself is pretty good. It's got an antler tip handle. I really love this thing. This is one of the best fire steels I've gotten a hold of yet. On the back, uh, it's of course got your standard belt loop. One thing I don't like about it is the fact the uh, belt loop's not real secure up there, so it flops around a lot while marking. But I've got no real complaints about it. Strong sheath, beautifully made, well done. All right, now the knife itself. You can see it's, I want to say it's roughly about a nine, maybe 10 inch blade. It's big enough to do the heavy chores, but it's not too big to be stupid about it. Um, the uh, steel rating was in Italian when I read it. So, Max, if you're watching this, Max or Crafter, if you're watching this, uh, feel free to chip in. Tell them what kind of steel this is. Um, the handle uh, is Coca Cocobolo. Very well executed. And he gave me actually two different styles of handles I wanted. This is the one I went with. Um, it's riveted on there. Got a lanyard hole for it. Brass guard. Again, you, as you see, it's full tank. The knife itself, the blade has this strange curve, which I find difficult to sharpen with a stone. So, it does pretty good with a, a sharpening steel. And, of course, it's fairly sharp. I can do feathers with it. As you can see, it'll feather up some. But then it's also strong enough I can do heavy chopping. I've taken down small trees with this thing already. And it's held its edge pretty good. Um, I want to say this is a 
pretty good uh, value. The knife itself was about 300 bucks, which I find to be rather competitively priced against US made knives. There are buoys this size and this quality in the United States you can't touch for less than 1500 bucks. But I want to say I got a good deal. Good deal on this knife. A um, couple of things that I would have improved on the knife is that it squared off the spine, made it nice and sharp to work with fire steel. But instead I found that this little choil here, this little piece right here, works real good for that. Uh, Y'all see me Y'all find out find my other vid. It's on my it'll be on my YouTube channel, but uh, where I use this ignite fire steel and set off this fire. But the, like I said, all in all, if I was gonna have one big chopper knife all around camp knife to have, you I wouldn't do too bad just having this. Uh, this is an extremely good blade and I'm rather tickled with it, its performance. Um, I mean, not too many of you larger knives nowadays, you just beat the tar out of it. Use this like a machete. It's like my axe. Ah, it's even stuck in there like my axe will. Now granted, I'm only chopping on tulip poplar. But you see, you know, just a few strokes, that's a pretty serious divot. So yeah, y'all looking for a good quality large knife, give Crafter and Max Packs a call. Uh, for those of you who are not on Bushcraft USA, uh, they're, a, they're a vendor on there. Uh, Max Packs Knives, I believe, is where well, you'll find it under the vendor forums. But, uh, yeah. And uh, hell, one thing I also really like is the uh, logo on the blade. It's really simple. I don't like a blade with a whole lot of uh, etching on there. All I did was stamp his name, stamp his company logo in there on one side. And there's that little tribal symbol he does. Mm -hmm. It's actually pretty good. Now, on to the other knife that he sent as a gift. I'm not even going to guess the cost of it. But I'd be willing to easily pay $150 for this knife, but he sent it to me free, and I've been extremely grateful for it, because this knife has been extraordinarily handy. Let me pull this out. This Actually, the sheath on this is fairly unique. It's one of the few um, folder sheaths I've seen that have a retention strap instead of just come over the top. But uh, yeah, it's nice and soft, supple. Good belt loop, pretty solid sheath with his uh, company name stamped in there. Open it up and I'll pull it out. And what we have here is one of his friction folders. Last time I saw his website, he had an Italian name that looked like four miles long. But So I'm not even going to try to pronounce what, what that was because I don't speak Italian. Any of you are familiar with this style of knife? Uh, Ward makes, makes them, uh, the peasant knives. Uh, again, I'm not uh, I'm not sure what kind of steel this is, but I'm guessing it's some kind of stainless. But this knife here, I've actually sat down with a piece of birch and I've carved out, carved out a couple of spoons with it. Uh, edge, hopefully I touched it up. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's shaving the hair off. Other things I didn't know was that dirt. Again, real good feathering. Makes fine, fine shavings. But even though it's a light construction knife, all solid wood handle, just pinned in, I wouldn't hesitate to. Do heavy carving with it. Now this knife is not squared off in any form to work with a fire steel. 
However, if y'all just want a knife that makes a good backup to say your big buoy or your ax or whatever, I wouldn't hesitate to carry one of these. It's a fine blade. It's far superior to a lot of the uh, other knives I have, uh, like my Buck 110 or I would even put his cutting ability up against the Morris, which I found to be exceptionally good knives as well. Um, the marking on the blade again is very simple. The only thing it has on it is the company name stamped, uh, stamped on the little, I'm not even sure what you call this. I'm going to call it a tang just for lack of a better word. And uh, yeah, again a really good knife to have on, have around. Real lightweight, easy to carry. Put it on your belt, you don't even know it's there until you need it. And when you do need it, you'll be glad you did. Alright. Redneck 17. Again. Max Packs, Crafter, all of them. You pair. Thanks very much for your business. I appreciate the knives. And I'll see you around the fire.